On the 27th of September 2024, during the United Nations General Assembly in New York, when it was time for the speech of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, more than half of the diplomats walked out of the assembly in protest. The message was very clear. Israel's bombing of Gaza and Lebanon. But what's the point of walking out? After that, Israel has also launched attacks on Yemen. If we talk about Gaza alone, more than 42,000 innocent people have been killed in the past year, including children and women, and millions of people were homeless. America, the European Union, and the UK have warned Israel many times that this war can also take a terrible form. A glimpse of this was seen by the world on the 1st October 2024, when Iran fired 200 ballistic missiles at Israel from 1,800 kilometers away. And the report by 2 October is that Israel has threatened Iran with serious consequences. While the world is trying to stop all this, Israel is constantly fighting on three of its five fronts like an uncontrolled monster. In the Middle East, surrounded by Arab countries all around, where did so much power come from in small Israel? What is the reason that despite the repeated warnings of the world's great powers, it has still failed to stop Israel? Welcome to Informative World Watch videos again. Viewers, before understanding the real power of Israel, it is also important for us to understand a little about the current situation. The problem of Israel and Palestine has been going on since there was no existence of these two. At present, the condition is, is that Israel has pushed the Palestinians to a small strip called the Gaza Strip. This territory is spread over an area of only 360 square kilometers, from where it is neither easy to leave nor to enter it. On one side is the Mediterranean, on the other is Egypt, so Israel is present on both sides. Only necessary things go here, only when Israel wants. For this reason, the international community believes that the Gaza Strip is the world's largest open-air prison. Gaza is currently under the control of Hamas, which is a militant wing, Last year in October, when Hamas fired thousands of rockets at Israel, as a result, the retaliatory action that Israel started is still going on. The biggest loss of this is happening to the local population of Gaza, who are being pushed into this war even though they do not want to. More than 42,000 people were killed, including children. Thousands of people were displaced and the number of injured is so high that it is difficult to count. Gaza which was once a city, now seems to be a heap of millions of tons of rubble. Israel says that they have done all this to end Hamas's militant wing and will continue to do so. But the thought does not digest that Gaza, which had a population of about 500,000 in 2017, how can 42,000 of them, that 8.5% of the population, be a militant wing? To avoid the attacks of Israel, the local population of Gaza has only one way left, that they leave the Gaza Strip and take refuge in Lebanon. Yes, the same Lebanon where the Israeli airstrikes are going on. But this is not so easy. First from Egypt, through the Red Sea, you have to enter in Jordan, then Syria, and finally Lebanon. Lebanon has a lot of Hezbollah, which is an Iranian-backed militant group. And this group also helps Hamas in Gaza. But who is Hezbollah? In the 1980s, Israel occupied South Lebanon during the civil war in Lebanon. To confront Israel, an armed group emerged there, which was named Hezbollah. This group pushed Israel out of Lebanon, and since then, it has been a powerful political and militant wing of Lebanon. Experts say that this group is more powerful than Lebanon's army, and it has received support from Iran. Since the emergence of Hezbollah, it has been a threat to Israel and every day their presence has become commonplace. But last year, after the attacks on Gaza, Hezbollah announced that it would openly support the Palestinians. Now there was a new problem for Israel. Because it was easy to attack Gaza, but now Hezbollah had to respond to them in Lebanon. Now Israel needed a big reason to attack Lebanon directly. Experts believe that this is when they planned major attacks. On September 17 and 18, 2024, more than 3,000 Hezbollah pagers and radio sets exploded at the same time. 
Hezbollah blamed Israel for this and fired several rockets at Israel. The time they were looking for had come. Israel began air strikes on South Lebanon the next day, and thousands were forced to leave their homes. In this operation, Hezbollah commander Hassan Nasrullah died. On the other hand, countries around the world have made great efforts to end the Middle East before it gets worse, and many countries have criticized Israel a lot. When it comes to aid, a lot of aid has been announced for Gaza from all over the world. Just talk about the U.S. on September 30, 2024. According to Reuters, the United States announced $300 million in aid for Palestinians in Gaza. On March 7, 2024, U.S. President Joe Biden announced that he would build a military port to help in Gaza. And on the same year, on February 27, the United States announced $53 million in aid. We get countless announcements like this on different news websites. But where most of the world's countries are criticizing Israel. Israel is getting more violent in these attacks. After all, what is the reason that Israel, surrounded by Arab countries, is not coming under control of anyone? This matter was also raised in the Security Council of the United Nations three times in the past year. Representatives from different countries take part in the UN Security Council, and a decision is made through voting on any issue. And this decision has to be accepted by the next country. But when the ceasefire agreement was made three times in the Security Council, the US used its veto power to cancel this decision. Yes, the same United States that announced millions of dollars in aid for Gaza. In June 2024, the United States itself signed a ceasefire agreement, which was also passed in the Security Council but was later vetoed. On the one hand, President Joe Biden says that the war is not in anyone's favor. So on the other hand, the United States also used veto powers in the UN. Not only that, but according to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, between 2019 and 2023, 69% of the weapons imported by Israel were ordered from the United States. In addition, Israel is also given $3.8 billion in military aid from the United States every year. All this information is also publicly available. People say that the United States talks about stopping attacks on Gaza, but on the other hand, it also supports Israel. This is why the war is increasing rather than decreasing, which can take on a terrible form in the Middle East in the future. But here, an important question arises. Why is the United States doing this? The answer to this question is found in religion. According to a research by the University of Utah in the United States, a very large population in the United States, about 35 or 40% of people believe in, many of these people believe that the creation of Israel is in line with the Bible. There is an organization in America whose purpose is to raise a voice for the protection of Israel and the Jews. This organization is called KUFI, that is, Christians United for Israel. There are 10 million members of this organization in the world, including many big names in American politics. This group of Christians is also called Zionists. Remember that Christianity is a different religion, and Jewish is a different one, while Zionism is such a political movement that works for Israel. Most importantly, it is not necessary that every Jew or every Christian is a Zionist. How does this group of Zionists make their own decisions in American politics or government? For this, there is a separate committee called the APEC, that is, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee. This is the world's largest and most powerful lobbying committee that can make its own decisions in the American Congress whenever it wants. All decisions are made in the U.S. Congress. New laws are made, budgets are approved, and wars are also fought. Members of the U.S. Congress make all these decisions through voting. Now, if a large group buys most of the members of the U.S. Congress and tells them that they have to vote for them in a certain resolution, this is called lobbying. And surprisingly, lobbying in America is absolutely legal. But there are some conditions for this. The one who is lobbying has to keep all these details public and under the table, not to give money to any member of the Congress. That is, whatever happens will happen in front of everyone. It is clearly written on the APEC website, 
that this group lobbies to implement Israeli policies in the American government. Not only that, but the candidates who stood in the U.S. general election and got support from APEC. 98% of them won the election. These candidates were also given $40 million. This group not only implements Israeli favorite policies in American politics, but also works to defeat those who are against Israel. It is written on their website that they also defeated 24 such candidates who were against pro-Israel policies. APEC's support for Israel is now taking on a very terrible form. It so happened that against human rights violations in Israel's bombings in Gaza, South Africa filed a case in the International Criminal Court ICC. This court is part of the United Nations, but it is not directly controlled by the United States. On April 24, 2024, ICC Chief Prosecutor Assad Karim Khan receives a threatening letter from 12 U.S. Senators in which it was written that we have received a report that the ICC is going to issue orders to arrest Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and other Israeli leaders. It was written that if you do this, then we, i.e. the US, will impose the worst sanctions against your institution. We will also impose restrictions on your and your family's US visits. In this letter, it was clearly written that if you target Israel, we will target you. And finally, at the end of the letter, it was mentioned that you have been warned. Along with this letter, the names and signatures of those 12 U.S. Senators were also attached. The interesting thing is that on the APEC website, there is a list of all those Senators who are pro-Israeli candidates and for whom funding is being collected. And the names of the Senators who wrote threatening letters to the ICC Chief Prosecutor are also written openly in this list. But the story is still left. You must have heard about bonds. Most of these are issued by governments to collect money from investors. And in return, the buyer of the bond is given an annual profit. The advantage of this is that the government gets money in the form of a loan. And whenever the bond has to be returned, the government also buys it back. Now let's come to the real story. According to a story by The Guardian in August 2023, a representative of Israeli bonds emailed Ohio State Treasurer in the United States and said that will he buy an Israeli bond worth $5 million. Normally, it is not so easy to sell anything to any government agency. It has a lot of complications and you have to get permission from different people. But surprisingly, in the next 40 minutes, the Treasurer's office approved the purchase of Israeli bonds. Later, it was found that after the war between Hamas and Israel, Various U.S. states and municipalities have purchased Israeli bonds worth at least $1.7 billion. It seems that America has many reasons to support Israel. The last of which is American support in the Middle East. As you know, there have been problems between Iran and the U.S. for decades. 20 years of American occupation in Afghanistan or a war in Iraq. America needs a loyal partner in the Middle East and South Asia. And who else but Israel can maintain this partnership? However, it is not a big deal to end the war in the Middle East. Arab countries want Palestinians to be given their own state. But Israel does not accept a two-state solution at any cost. I hope you will like and share this video of Informative World Watch. Thank you very much for your loving comments. See you in the next great video.